Today's presentation will uh, deal with the ARIS Visual Analyzer, the first steps in order to use the ARIS system. I will talk about the principle first, then I will uh, discuss about the starter procedure. After that, we will uh, see the image capture, then the image treatment. A small we will talk about the maintenance, which is very simple, and have a few words about current theory. But first, let's talk about the principle of the Iris analyzer. Uh, as for the order and the taste, uh, Iris visual analyzer is working with in order to mimic what's occurring in uh, human perception of color, odor, and taste uh, via the odor and taste visual receptor, which is the nose, the tongue, tongue for taste, and the eye for the color and shapes. These signals are treated by the brain, uh, which allow to have an interpretation of what it is, what is seen, uh, uh, smelled, or tasted. The objective of the Alphamos technology is to mimic this human sensory perception using specific sensors for odors, for liquid, or also for the color and shape, which is in this case a camera. We use a computer to, uh, to process the data coming from these sensors which allows to have an interpretation uh, according to some statistical model in order to give a decision. This is the iris uh, visual analyzer. We have a light cabin in which we can put a sample. The camera is inside, uh, which takes some pictures that can be treated using the computer uh, with the AlphaSoft software. The visual analyzer iris is adapted to complex colored product for which colorimeter are not operational. Uh, we will not analyze one unique uh, color, but a composition, uh, a mixture of different colors in a product. These are some examples of uh, application that can be done uh, using the system. We have analyzed salami slices to evaluate the color change through time. Pop tart pastry to quantify the proportion of frosty area. Uh, for beef, beef meat, we have analyzed the ratio. We have quantified the ratio of fat and, uh, and lean. In Jinko seal, the efficiency of the process and the color changing in co uh, coffee bean the size different and light color variation or different origin uh, the the and and in the strip we have analyzed the size and color of this product what are the different parts of the iris visual analyzer the most important part in volume is the light cabin which allows to have homogeneous lighting condition we have some light that can be on the lower side or in the upper sides and this cabin was designed to have a very homogeneous lighting on the area of the sample uh, we can get this homogeneous lighting in term of uh, place in the cabin, but also in term of stability in time with uh, LED light emitting diodes. Uh, there are four, uh, four LEDs on each module. There is a four module on the upper side and a four module on the lower side. That is 16 in the top and 16 on the bottom which allows to have a homogeneous light. Uh, the CCD camera uh, allows 16 million colors with a specific lens. Uh, we calibrate 
in order to get a repeatable analysis, we have to calibrate the camera and we use a standard color checker uh, with uh, 24 different colors. And uh, the computer and AlphaSoft uh, allows to do the data treatment, the color treatment, and the results are compatible and can be uh, mixed with the result coming from the electronic nose and the electronic tongue. Then we are can have a uh, triple dimension that can, for the same, if we analyze the same product using electronic nose, electronic tongue, and electronic eye, we can have the three dimension of perception in order to do, for example, benchmarking of product. After seeing the, princip uh, the principle, we will see the startup uh, procedure. The startup procedure is quite simple. Uh, to start the system, you just first switch on the light cabin, and then you can switch on, on the two uh, lights, the upper light with this button and the lower light with this the second button. A LED will indicate if the uh, the light uh, panel is on. It will be red first and will turn to green after five minutes. But the even uh, before five minutes, the the color the light can be stable. And then you can switch on the computer with this button. Uh, one of the first things to do on uh, AlphaSoft, when you open AlphaSoft, you double click on the AlphaSoft icon and then you will uh, go to Analysis, Acquisition and you, the camera will be automatically detected by the, the connector using an Ethernet connection. You click on Connect. That will allow to show an image of the interior of the cabin. I, we advise to put the color checker uh, in order to see an object. Uh, otherwise, the, the, the image will uh, appear white, uh, a white rectangle will show a white rectangle, which is uh, light only with no, uh, no sample on it. Here you can see that the current calibration is expired. That means that when you start, one of the first step is to calibrate the camera. This is the uh, next step. Uh, you go to in acquisition, you have a menu calibration, you click on it and then calibration, which will start. Uh, that will start a uh, calibration wizard. You click on next. And uh, on the first step, it will uh, show the, the calibration, the color checker on uh, the image. You, the first step is to place a color checker under the grid. This is uh, the real um, window that appears in this uh, calibration uh, wizard. Place a color checker under the grid, center each box in each uh, color. Then you have to move by end the, the color checker to, to have this uh, black rectangle in the middle of it. And this is this can be done like that manually inside. You move inside the cabin so that the rectangle are centered on each color. Be careful, the white, the color checker should be in this position. This is the front of the of the cabin, and uh, the white should be in front on the on the left, and the black uh, in front in the right. Uh, then you should uh, select the color uh, light emitting mode. You can select either top or and bottom or top only or bottom only. You can select also the length. We will see that later. Uh, after that, you will have to adjust the focus of the camera using the the on the length of the camera. We'll see that in the next picture of the of the camera. And then you close the door. It's important to close the door to have an homogeneous light because uh, when you click on next, there will be a first evaluation of the level of light. 
and if the cabin is open the level of light will be lower than when it's closed because on the door there is a white reflection panel that can increase and homogenize the light within the cabin we click on next and then the system will check the exposure exposure of the of the cabin with the light with the white uh, rectangle and it, it will show if the image is underexposed or that is it appears too too dark or overexposed it appears too light or if it's correct the correct it will show a, a small rectangle of color if it's red this is the position of the actual light level of the image uh, and there are two green, uh, blue bars that shows the uh, correct exposure. In order to uh, to get the exposure, the 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 diaphragm uh, should be turned on this. This is the position of the diaphragm on the on the on the lens. Here I talk about the the zoom, the the focus. The focus is here. There is no zoom in the, on this uh, lens. It's a fixed zoom. You have two possibility to uh, adjust uh, focus, and then uh, this is a diaphragm in order to open or sh or close the uh, diaphragm. To when you close your diaphragm, you go to underexposed, and when you open the diaphragm, you over you go to, to overexposed. Then in this direction, you open the diaphragm slightly this is this is a very minute uh, process it can take um, a few minutes for uh, beginners when you're on, used to it it's easier but it's very minute change you should not sh change too much each time one uh, tip is to have to see uh, the homogeneous light here and only a slight shade on one uh, corner but when you have set, you close the door and click OK until you get a green rectangle in, in, uh, within the two bars of correct exposure. There is some tolerance, but it can, be, it can take some tries to, uh, to get this green. Maybe uh, you can have uh, the, the system will not be able to process the end if the exposure is not uh, correct. And then the system will check the, all the color and adjust the color and, and, and determine if the calibration is pass or fail. And uh, this, this uh, result should appear. If it's fail, one possibility is that the color checker is in the wrong direction. If you put the white on the over on the back right then the calibration will fail but it can also indicate some problem of lighting and then when it's done you click on end the lens replacement is very easy first step you have to shut down the iris uh, clicking on zero then uh, you open the the cabin and you will uh, see the lens here you just have to unscrew it uh, delicately be careful not to let it fall down and uh, then you remove it delicately you put it in, the, in into its protective box and then you can take the new uh, lens never touch the lens the glass lens uh, the optics with your bare hands only on the plastic parts but you can you see the screw you will put the screw uh, the lens in place by screwing it's about five or six to five to ten turns i don't remember but it's uh, when it's finished when it's screwed you you will new uh, knew it then it's it takes only a few seconds to do when it's in position you have to you can start up the iris you will have to uh, record the new lens in AlphaSoft and you will have to do a calibration of the new lens. Uh, adjust the focus and the uh, diaphragm of the new lens. 
because it's uh, it's not set at the beginning. Uh, we will see now the image image capture. Uh, in the method uh, of uh, image capture, one parameter to uh, to decide at the beginning is the lens size. Depending on the size of your uh, object, the object that you want to uh, measure, you may have, you may need a uh, different lens. Uh, the standard lens is a five millimeter uh, optics. It's called that. It's uh, it's written on it. It's a standard calibration. It gives us a window of view of forty five centimeter by thirty four centimeter. It's almost uh, it's most of the size of the plan of uh, of the cabin, and you have with this you have 4.8 pixel per millimeter. That makes makes 38 mil, uh, pixel per millimeter square, and this is the size of the of the pixel. If you get a uh, uh, higher lens, uh, 25 is the highest, you will have a very sh a small window that is 9 cm by 7 cm. That means that you will have a much higher uh, uh, resolution of small objects, for example, um, uh, coffee beans. Uh, the number of pixels per millimeter will be uh, around 30 compared to 6, that is 5 times higher in uh, in resolution and but the number the size of the image will be lower uh, for this uh, for this three uh, lengths 12 16 and 25 millimeter you will the standard color checker is too large uh, you can only see with this uh, size only a few colors of the standard color checker that's why uh, these lenses are provided with a passport, passport size uh, color checker. That is a small, the same colors, but with a very a much smaller size. It's uh, almost nine by seven centimeter large, when the other is uh, around this side. Uh, when you have done that, uh, you. Uh, for the product, you can also uh, choose the illumination type. You can be it can be up and down, up only. Uh, in some cases, down only. But most of the time, it will be up and down. Uh, you have a possibility to select the colors, uh, the color, uh, the tray color. It can be. Uh, it is white by uh, standard uh, standard. Uh, but it can be black. Uh, but when it's black, you can only use the up uh, illumination because it's not uh, translucent. And the, the next, uh, the last uh, parameters that you can select is the size of the image. You can have a, um, a computer uh, zoom. It's not a real zoom. It's not an optic zoom. It's a, a computer zoom. And uh, you can have the size. You can adjust the size of your image in using uh, on clicking and setting, and by adjusting this uh, elevator or adjusting the size in pixel uh, in the image. And uh, this uh, size, when it's uh, set manually or uh, within this uh, image, live image, you can uh, get it back when you create the method, the next step that we will know, uh, know uh, we will see now. Uh, in order to get an acquisition, you must, you, sh you must do, uh, you must create first a method. For each product, you will set parameters to, uh, to to do the acquisition and the data treatment always the same way. That is, uh, these parameters of treatment and acquisition are, uh, are gathered in what we call the method. For this, you will click on uh, analysis, uh, method, and new method. It will, uh, it will open a first uh, 
method wizard. Uh, here you have the building uh, step of the method. You click on next. Uh, you will select the method category and then click on next. You put the name of the method, the sample mass. I advise to uh, set a precise mass in order to have repeatable um, analysis. And then you click on next. You can have uh, on step three, which is uh, method type, you can select single snapshot, which is a single image when you do an acquisition. But there is a possibility to have a multi snapshot. That is, you can determine uh, that uh, an automatic uh, picture will be taken every uh, after every a certain time. It can be one picture every minute, one picture every 10 minutes, etc. That, that way you can see if you have a single product, you can see the evolution of the, this product in time. For example, if you want to monitor the, the foam of a product, uh, the, the speed of disappearance, disappearance of this foam. The step four is uh, used for the model calibration. When you create the method, this is always be empty. But after you get some uh, acquisition, you can create some specific model of interpretation and save it. You will uh, modify the method and put the model interpretation in there. That is the calibration. And that will allow an automatic treatment of the result and giving a simple, a simple response. That is, for example, uh, pass and fail, or it can be a quantification of specific parameter. And then you click on next. Uh, you will set uh, image image size. You can uh, get the acquisition method parameters that were set manually, uh, what we have seen, by using the acquisition method parameter here. You set the lens and the light mode. If you want to have repeatable analysis of one product, you will have always to use the same lens and the same lighting mode. If uh, the system is set with a different uh, lens or a different lighting mode, the system will not allow to use this method. Uh, this is important because if you uh, get uh, the model, if you create a model with one, one type of elimination, uh, you cannot use another elimination to determine the quality of your product. And then you can click on N on the last step of the wizard. Uh, the next, uh, when you have created your method, you can capture some image. You go to acquisition, and then you go to, uh, in this part, the acquisition parameter, you put the category, the method name, and this will automatically set the parameter of uh, zoom that you have. And you put, the name of the sample here, and you can uh, click on acquisition. Uh, we advise to do some replicate of the same sample by moving. You can uh, put another uh, sample, uh, another sample, or move the sample into the image to take another acquisition. We advise at least three acquisition of the same sample. Uh, you don't have to put, uh, you should not put a uh, different name for the different replicate of the image. The system will automatically set a number, for example, A1 here, uh, for the different acquisition of the same image. Now we will see uh, the data treatment. One step of the Data, one very important step of the data treatment is the data pre-processing. The pre-processing will allow to remove the background because in the image, most of the image is mostly uh, uh, dealing with the background and we want to concentrate only on the sample. Uh, for this, we can remove the background by uh, playing on the image uh, on the different colors. We have here a spectrum of color red, spectrum of color green, and spectrum of color blue. 
uh, if we remove some uh, remove some color of the green we can remove most of the background which is very very light very very uh, bright here uh, we have uh, in this we take all the red color and uh, all the green color but we uh, do not take the brightest blue from uh, 45 uh, 45 to 55 with just this uh, position and just with this uh, adjustment we can remove the background the black background then the raw image appear here and after pre-processing we have removed all the background and in this case the pistachios appears only in the image then the remaining image on which it will be the analysis will be done will be on this image uh, on the right we we can have different parameters we can have a global or object analysis that is uh, global we will analyze the old image and not the shape uh, if we analyze object we can have uh, each object separated but in this case uh, if you want to analyze this, the shape of a separate object in the image uh, will have to be separated uh, you can have primitives, you can have shapes. Uh, the color parameters of primitives are here. We will see that later. The multi-object parameter, minimum size and maximum size are here. The spectrum value, minimum proportion and uh, relative error or pixel number are here. Uh, you can adjust this. I just talked about the uh, reprocessing threshold. Uh, this is very important to remove the background in order to get only the image. Here, the, we can play on the removal of some uh, of some of the of the background by playing on one color. Most of the time, it's blue. It can be green, but just only a few pixels because you should not uh, remove any white uh, that can appear on the sample. When it is set with a minimum, you can uh, you will uh, go on the, the other parameters. Uh, just to say that there are different uh, possibility to see in uh, RGB here. RGB uh, color, you can have HSV and LAB. We will see that later in the end. Uh, what's the difference between this color uh, coordinate? The spectrum value, uh, the minimum area for color is an important parameter. We can uh, illustrate this uh, proportion here. Uh, if we put one person here, it will determine only the color that have more than one percent uh, proportion in the image. We have uh, 4,000 different types of uh, with 16 million colors, these are gathered into 4,084 uh, uh, different colors and uh, if one color is contains um, more than this percentage it will appear if it's less than one percent it will not be displayed here that means that uh, you will not display all the image if you put 0 0.1 you will see much uh, a much lar larger number of of color as you can see here the main color will be the same but that means that uh, you will see much more color. And if you put zero, that means that every pixel will be represented into the representation. This is a, a pre-processing method uh, value minimum. It's important to set the value at zero if you are intent to do to use the HEA uh, pre-processing. When you use a zero, you will have more color, more data into the library. Then it's you have to test. It can be sufficient to have one person, but in some cases it can be better to have 0.1. Uh, here you have parameters of this spectrum: the average value minimum, or the relative area, or the pixel number of this of specific color. Uh, the primitive allows to uh, determine a proportion of a specific color in one object. Uh, uh, this is a raw image uh, after removal of the background. The primitive will determine 
what is the equivalent uh, area of one specific color. You can see this color here. Uh, we have this color and uh, the average area around this is uh, proportional to the size of the circle. And uh, this can give uh, an idea of the heterogeneity of the color into the image. The object shape, uh, when you have separated object, you can analyze the shape, that is the area, the circularity, the aspect ratio, the position in X and Y, the length, the width, etc., etc., all the parameters. And you can sort them by this. Uh, in one image, you may have several different uh, objects. Here we have more than 23, maybe more. Uh, in this shape descriptor, uh, you can preview an image using shape descriptor. It will show a table with a different object. Each object uh, is starting by one from the lower position to the upper. And uh, you have the area, the circularity. The, the object that is selected is uh, mentioned in, uh, in red is is uh, and the uh, magnified magnified image of this object is here. Uh, you can adjust on multi object the minimum size. That is, if you have dust and uh, on your picture, you can remove by uh, putting a higher value for minimum. On the contrary, if you only want to see dust, you can say, uh, I want to remove big objects. That way, you can uh, evaluate the size, uh, the proportion of a uh, large object or the proportion of small object in an image. And this is uh, in data type, it's object shape descriptor. You can select a spectrum. In this case, you will have the spectrum of each object. For example, you will have uh, on library the size of this pistachio, but you will have also the proportion of the different color of this spray pistachio. This is very powerful to analyze uh, the color and shape of every single object. Uh, just to mention, uh, I talk about cir circularity. Uh, it's an indication of the, of the shape of the object. When the value uh, of one, we it indicates a perfect circle, and the value of zero uh, indicates a very elongated shape. You can see that depending on the shape of the object, you will have a circularity that is close to one or close to zero. Uh, but the value may not be valid for a very small particle, for which the number of pixels is very low. The uh, AR aspect ratio is a major minus uh, minor major axis over minor axis. It's enable. It's uh, indicating. A, it's very similar to the circularity, but uh, somewhat different. Uh, it enable a fit uh, ellipse and determine the ratio of the two uh, objects, the two dimensions. The U moments are also used in a shape. It, uh, it's a shape descriptor, uh, descriptors uh, obtained from an approach of contour of the object, uh, calculated from the moment. They are calculated for a given contour and the intensity value contained in this contour. Uh, there are the, the important aspect of this is that they are invariant under translation, the uh, dilation and the rotation of the object. That means that two shrimps of the same shape and same color but different size will uh, present uh, similar coefficient. Uh, they are uh, unitless and are used in uh, pattern recognition that have no meaning for a single object, they are used to compare objects. Uh, the color code, we have talked about uh, different color codes. It can be RGB, uh, which indicate a uh, value in red, green, and blue, a proportion of red, green, and blue. LAB, a lightness, and uh, two dimension A and B. We will see that later, LAB. It can be HSV. But we have uh, our, in 
AlphaSoft, we have used a, a single code color that is uh, continuous and is an equivalent of different RGB value. But if you want to see uh, the correspondence between the value of AlphaSoft and the RGB or LAB, you just click on color code, you put the color code here, and you will have the corresponding color here and the codes for RGB or LAB. Uh, the library of filters uh, allows to do statistical analysis of the different images. Uh, the assays uh, in line in library uh, in, in global it's each image which is considered as one assay. But in multi object uh, each assay is one object of uh, one image of each image is considered as an assay. If you have 20 different pistachio in an image, then you will have 20 different assays, different objects that are uh, will be analyzed in library for statistical analysis. The statistic will be done on each pistachio. Uh, the variable, uh, the color in the library will uh, can be a color spectrum, that is the proportion of color in one image or in one object. The primitive, that is the color size and standard deviation of the primitive circle, uh, it can be done for, uh, it can only done be for global. And the shape descriptor, uh, which has their area, circularity, uh, the uh, height and uh, width, etc., etc., and U value uh, will be in variables. Uh, in order to um, when you first, uh, in order to have a library, you will have to save your preprocessing parameters. For this, you go to uh, after you have selected uh, the the threshold values, the data type that you want, and the filter primitive and spectrum, etc. Here, for example, global uh, spectrum. Uh, you can save it uh, with preprocessing, save data, save prep method. And you can build a library um, by uh, clicking on new, and uh, you are, you will have this library, and uh, each object here will appear in a single line, and each color will uh, the proportion of each color will appear in each column. You can do a statistical analysis of this, and. Uh, First, you can do hierarchical cluster analysis. For this, you uh, you can select on sensor uh, HCA. Uh, the minimal number of sensor is uh, two. But you first, you will have to select the dimension. It can be uh, LAB or RGB. LAB is closer to human perception. That is, two images that are two colors that are close on uh, human perception will be close on LAB uh, standard, which is not always the case for RGB. Then uh, both can be interesting, but uh, first it would it should be used with LAB. Then you can have the spectrum classification. Uh, yes, the color space, uh, this will consider the calculation distance between uh, the the different color of a single image. The data on the, uh, analysis on which the share must be done. It can be other color spectrum or primitives. Uh, first, in this uh, wizard, you will have this hierarchical uh, clustering analysis. You can select the colors. First, you should uh, select the main colors and see uh, if uh, you want to separate main color in a, in a product, you you will have you may have to select a single number a small number of colors. By this and clicking on visualize, you can see which color which cluster uh, can give in the result. For example, if you have uh, this uh, color cluster in this image uh, in this image mix one. You can have also the negative, but most of the time it's positive and a raw image. But it will show the the color that appears as uh, this cluster. 
all this cluster uh, will appear as uh, red. That means that in this image, which shows a, uh, mostly yellow, light yellow uh, part of the image, will be shown in red. If you click on the raw picture, you remove this red picture. But uh, the other cluster will maybe show this uh, red, red image, or orange, or green, etc. That way you can have, instead of having uh, 100 different pixel colors, you can have a, a small number of uh, cluster that gives a simple, uh, uh, simplified uh, indication uh, or data treatment for the, for the color analysis. You have the yellow cluster here. Uh, if you want to create, uh, here you will have to save under a new library the result of this cluster. And, and the first library will be, uh, the, yes, uh, the library will be first created in RGB and then after clustering you will have this kind of result. Uh, you can do multi-varied uh, statistical analysis of this result. Uh, you can do some uh, data analysis, some benchmarking. You can uh, also use uh, quality control for the analysis of color, uh, the same way as for as for uh, electronic nodes using Alpha Alpha Soft. Now we will talk about the maintenance, which is quite simple. Um, when the, the color checker should be replaced every year, uh, when you receive a new color checker, uh, you click on replace and you put the date of replacement. Uh, the light cabin should be dusted every week. You can, you should, you can use uh, water and a uh, towel, a paper towel, you never use uh, organic solvent. Uh, the lens optic, if it's dirty, you should use this uh, pens, this uh, cleaning pen. Uh, it's used. It's specifically uh, designed to uh, avoid uh, scratches onto the optics. Uh, you have a cleaning pencil here, uh, and uh, on this part to uh, to clean the optic. You have to be very careful of the optic in order to avoid scratches. As I told you, I will talk about uh, the color theory. Uh, that is uh, the RGB system, uh, which mentioned red, red, green, and B uh, value with 256 level for H, which gives, gives 16 million possibilities. Uh, in our system, we have gathered each uh, level of red, green, and blue under eight different levels that gives a specific color. That means that there are uh, 4,080 different uh, colors, 4,096 color scale. And uh, it can be transformed to uh, LAB. It can be equivalent to LAB, uh, which is uh, very close to human vision. It described uh, all the color visible to human eye. Uh, there is L, which is an indication of lightness. If you compare 25% light and 25, uh, 75, with the same color between uh, two dimension between a uh, minus a and plus a uh, from the green to the red and uh, plus b to minus b from the green to the blue. Uh, in three dimension, the LAB system appears as here. You can see the a L axis, the b axis, and l axis with L, which is low on dark uh, colors and uh, close to 100 for very light uh, sample. The HSV, uh, HSV uh, is another uh, dimension of color which signifies uh, U, saturation and value. 
The U is an attribute of the visual, visual sensation according to which an area appears to be similar to one of the perceived color, red, uh, green, uh, yellow, green, or blue, to a combination, uh, or to a combination of two of them. We have this U color here, or here. You can see the different colors of the rainbow. The saturation gives an uh, indication of the uh, colorfulness of the stimulus relative to its own brightness. It's this dimension of the, uh, of the system, it can be here. And the value or lightness, the brightness relative to the brightness of a similarly illuminated white. And this is the value of uh, color. This is the HSV system. Uh, just one word about CCD camera. Um, in a CCD, it's, uh, it's, it's made of uh, sensor with photodiodes that are covered with, uh, with filters, color filters. They can be red filters to analyze the red color, the green filter to analyze the green color, and the blue filter to analyze the blue, uh, uh, blue color. And each uh, LED, uh, each uh, sensor analyzes only one pixel of one color. And uh, you can have a white saturation here with the photoelectric effect. And uh, for there are two times more green filters and red and uh, blue because uh, the human vision is, is more sensitive to uh, wavelength correct responding to green. And using this, you can uh, recreate uh, an image of this with CCD color. And that, that was all. Thank you very much. If you have questions, I will be happy to answer you.